In this video, I'll be telling you a little bit about what custom metadata is, along with showing you how you can create custom metadata specifically to help with Salesforce automations. And then I'll be showing you how you can use Apex code and custom metadata to automate a simple business process. Hey everyone, it's William from SmoothStack again. So what is custom metadata exactly? There's actually a lot of good explanations for it online, including these two Salesforce trailheads that I'm throwing up on the screen right now. Uh, the URLs should also be in the video description. If you're not at all familiar with custom metadata yet, uh, just go through these two trailheads. First, you're going to want to do the one that is get started with custom metadata types, and then you're going to want to move on to create and manage custom metadata types. So if you're not familiar at all yet, go ahead and do these two uh, really quick. Shouldn't take more than 20 minutes, so you can go ahead and pause the video. All right, so hopefully you're starting to understand what custom metadata is. But if you're still kind of shaky, don't worry, I was the exact same way when I first started out. So let me offer you this simpler explanation for now. So you know how Salesforce has a lot of uh, files in it, like this field file or this layout file. So these are just two examples of metadata. Metadata is basically, uh, in Salesforce, files that contain information that tells Salesforce how to treat and how to work with your data. Like this field file tells Salesforce that this is a text field with a character limit of 255 characters, and this layout field specifies the order in which Salesforce should display your object's fields on a page layout. So yeah, these are just two examples of metadata. Custom metadata is just another version of one of these files that, just like layouts and fields, contains information that Salesforce can use to work with your data. This way of storing information is really useful as a resource for Salesforce automations to use. And we'll be creating custom metadata that looks a lot like this today. So hopefully now we have a working knowledge of what custom metadata generally is. Let's say that as a super simple example, we have a business process that we're trying to automate where whenever an account gets created, another record of another object needs to be created and related to that account. If an account of the individual record type gets created, we need to create a person custom object record. And if an account of the corporate record type gets created, then instead we need to create a customer object record. Since this is a very simple example, let's say that in both situations, we just name the record we created after the account. And if a person record gets created, we fill in the person's birthday from my custom birthday field on account. And if a customer record gets created, we fill in their number of employees field from my custom number of employees field on account. So there are two different links in our business process, the link between account and person and the link between account and customer. To support the automation of this process, we're going to create custom metadata that bundles together into one file a reference to the account object and its individual record type with a reference to the person object and the person object's account lookup, name, and birthday fields. We're also going to create custom metadata that bundles together a reference to the account object and its corporate record type with a reference to the customer object and the customer object's account lookup, name, and number of employees fields. So essentially, we need a custom metadata record for each link in our very simple example business process that has references to everything we'll be using to get from one end to the other. 
Going into my org, I have this custom metadata type that I've pre-made that we're going to use to create our metadata records. It has no fields right now, but we're going to fix that. Comparing our two paths or links in the business process, we can see that while the specifics of the paths may be different, they are actually formatted pretty similarly. Both paths have an object record that needs to be created at the beginning, a field on the first object that needs to equal a certain value for a second record on another object to be created, and then finally, both paths have three fields on the second object that need to be set to a certain value. First, let's create a way for our metadata to reference the account object. We start by creating a custom field, and it'll be a metadata relationship. We want to use this field to reference uh, another object, so we'll make it an entity definition. And so this will allow records of this metadata type to reference any other object in the org. Because the account object is part of the criteria for creating other records in this business process, we'll call this field the criteria object. We'll leave everything else as the default. And finish creating. Next, we want a way to reference the account's record type. We'll create another metadata relationship. Make it a field definition. And call it criteria. Field. And here's where it gets interesting. Criteria fields need an entity definition to be their controlling field. On records of this metadata, when we select account as the value for the criteria object, this criteria field will become a pick list of all the fields on the account object that we can reference. So field definitions allow you to reference fields on whatever object is referenced by their controlling field. All field definitions need an entity definition for a controlling field. And in fact, you can't even create a field definition unless you have an entity definition created already. If you're confused, this will start to make more sense once we actually create our metadata records. So hang tight. So criteria object for the controlling field, next, finish creating, next, because the record types need a value to be compared with, individual or corporate, we're going to add a text value field to our metadata, which should be pretty simple. we're going to add a way to reference the object being created from this automation. So just like we created the criteria object, we're going to create another metadata relationship to entity object called created object. Since we're also going to fill in three fields, name, account lookup, and either birthday or number of employees, we're also going to create three more field definitions with created object as the controlling field. In the interest of time, I'm going to just snap my fingers and conjure those into existence right now. OK, so now that we've got our fields created, let's create some records. 
we're basically trying to bundle what we need in each path in our business process into a metadata record. So let's do the first individual path first. We're going to go to Manage, then New. Let's call this If Individual Account is Created. And our criteria field is going to be account. I mean, our criteria object, that is. And our criteria field is going to be um, record type name, which is just a custom formula field I created on the account object to retrieve the record type name so that I don't have to work with the record type ID number. So that's going to be our criteria field. Our criteria value is going to be individual. And our created object is going to be person. And our first created field that we're going to be filling in is going to be account. And then name and then birthday. Save and new. Then let's make the other metadata record for our other path for the corporate accounts. So if corporate account is created, criteria object account, criteria field, Record type name, not a whole lot changes here except for the criteria value. And the created object. Then again, we have account, then name, then in this case, number of employees. Then save. So with our metadata records created, Let's look at how they're going to be used in our Apex code. Before we go on, here's a quick knowledge check. What do we need to create before we create a field definition on custom metadata? A. A text field. B. An entity definition. C. An Apex class. Or D. A Reddit account. Go ahead and pause the video for a minute so you can think about it. If you chose B, you're right. And if you chose D, that's also kind of true because Reddit is an excellent source for programming help. So moving on to the Apex code, I've created this after insert trigger on account. And so first, we're going to use SoQL to search for record creator metadata records that will create stuff related to the account object. So we're going to search for a criteria object of account plus all the fields that we're going to need. Then we create a list of generic Salesforce objects. Then for each account, we go through the list of record creator records that we retrieved. And then using the object.get method, we retrieve whatever the criteria field, like the record type name, is from account and compare it to the value for the criteria field that's stored on the metadata record. And if it turns out that there's a match between the two, we start creating the new record. When we're creating our new record, first, we retrieve the object that we want to create a new record of using this line here on line 10. Then we create a new record of our object here on line 11. Then using the Salesforce object.put method, we fill in fields on our new record by adding the field name and its value in like the record is just an apex map. Then we add our new record to the list of records that we made at the beginning. Then we move on to the next account if there is one.
And as you can see, um, when we use entity and field definition relationships as variables in code, we look up to the qualified API name of the relationship like so, because that returns the developer name for the object or field, like account or person underscore C or name or birthday underscore C. And then once we're done, we just insert the records. If you learn nothing else from this video, I would hope that my code at least got you started with creating records using variables for the objects and fields. These methods I'm highlighting here are really useful for automations, whether those automations use custom metadata or not. Now, without further ado, let's actually run this automation. We're going to create an individual account first. We're going to name it John Johnson, number of employees one, and then stay, save. And then we're going to create a corporate account. Johnson. Johnson, number of employees, two, birthday filled in, save. So now let's check the person object. Awesome, everything got filled in here. Now we're going to check the customer object. And awesome, everything got filled in here too. All right, so everything works. This was a very simple academic example, but this showed how we can use custom metadata to support Salesforce automations. We use entity definition and field definition relationships together to bundle together objects and fields on our metadata records. And then we refer to those objects and fields in our Apex code using commands like these on the screen to automatically perform actions in Salesforce. And hopefully this at least got you started with using custom metadata for automations. Or if you're already familiar, but you know someone that's struggling with automating Salesforce, then share this with them 